Hey, L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva shared the latest crime statistics in L.A. County. Villanueva also talked about the man suspected of killing Brianna Kupfer and his lengthy criminal history. He should not ever have been released. He would have been a, uh, I think he was arrested possibly for possession of stolen items. It used to be a felony, now a misdemeanor. Got out on a ticket in October and just a few months later he's killing uh, uh, Brianna. You know, right at the start of her life. I mean, that, that's such a tragedy. It's horrendous. And the fact is... The sheriff went on to say that homelessness and mental illness are part of the uptick in violent crimes. And Fox 11 is digging for answers on this surge in violent crime. Our initiative is called Save Our Streets. And so, let's now talk about that with L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva, who joins us live. Sheriff, good to see you. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, let's talk uh, sort of broader about, we've now had two different attacks in L.A. County of two different women who were killed by homeless men in seemingly random attacks. A lot of people are feeling unsafe about that. What's the solution? What can be done? Well, it's not just two. You, d you forgot Jackie Avant in Beverly Hills as well. That's actually three. Right. And what two can be done week, is... I should say. <laughs> yeah, it's true in the last week. And it, the sad thing is that they're happening with that level of frequency. I mean, 94% increase of homicides in two years in our jurisdictions. That is an alarming number. And it it calls directly to the fact that there are people out there that are a serious threat to society that we do not have the capacity to detain for mental health uh, evaluations and we just don't have it same thing with substance abuse so these people suffer in public in the light of day an open air asylum as some people describe it and when we're so getting so used to it we don't even pay attention until it's too late like the tragedy of the burlington coat factory that person was there for a half an hour doing strange things, but oh, it wasn't until he started to try to kill people that then they called 911. And that, that lag time is not helping us at all. And just like New York City, woman pushed into a, onto the, the path of a subway by another homeless person, broad daylight. I mean, these things are tragedies, but some of them are preventable if we hold people accountable to violating the rule of law. We don't have this revolving door we have going on right now. And Sheriff Villanueva, as a follow-up to that, you know, you mentioned one of the crime statistics of 94% increase in homicides, but what exactly can we do about this issue? What are some of the solutions? Do we need more services for the homeless community? Well, we need definitely to increase our capacity to treat people with mental health issues. It has to be in residential, confined settings, step-down capacity. In other words, people that are severely mentally disturbed that pose a physical threat to the community, to themselves, they need to be in secured facilities. Other medium level security, outpatient services. We need all this capacity that doesn't exist. In fact, our system has been degrading systemically year after year. We have entire hospitals, LA County USC Medical Center, massive building sits empty. St. Vincent Medical Center sits, sits empty. And Norwalk, Metro State Hospital, you got tumbleweeds, uh, you know, walking through, flying through the place. These are places that we have resources, we have the real estate, the buildings are there. What's lacking is a political will to build up that capacity. Until we get to that point, we're going to continue to see these senseless acts that are horrific in nature that makes us all feel less secure. I know you've been frustrated with Governor Newsom with his plan when it comes to homelessness. He's also been frustrated with L.A. County District Attorney George Gascone for his decision not to pursue enhancements like gang enhancements against many different uh, uh, criminals. Uh, recently, there was this case of Fernando Arroyos, off-duty LAPD officer, shot and killed while trying to check out a place where he could potentially live. Gang members suspected of that. You actually went around L.A. County D.A. Uh, and went to the feds to get racketeering charges involved, to try to add enhancements that way. Is that going to be a new normal? Is that going to be the new model for you? And, and do you think something like that may be possible in some way in, in some of these latest cases? Some of them it's going to work, and unfortunately some of the other ones it's not going to work. we got to remember we can't overburden the federal system. And federal laws are, are somewhat different from state laws. 
the the playbook that we work with the penal code health and safety code welfare institution code of the state is far larger than the federal codes that are applicable so it's a very it's a smaller uh, playbook that the feds have to play with in a lot of cases we could present them in good faith but let's say we have no federal nexus here in this case in the arroyos uh, murder fortunately they had a task force involving that gang in particular that the fbi was working on so it fit right within their their prosecutorial scheme to impact violent crime by organized uh, street gangs so sometimes it's going to work sometimes it's not going to be there so we need to have a local district attorney that's going to follow the rule of law and enforce and use gun enhancements use gang enhancements where it's appropriate but you Blanket said, policy, we're not going to do it, don't work. You said that he was going to be recalled. I'm, I'm sure you saw this week. They didn't get enough valid signatures to get the recall on the... Well, sorry, I'm thinking of Mike Bonin right now, and I'm not thinking of George Gascon. The original recall of him didn't go through. We'll see what happens uh, with George Gascon. Go ahead. Sorry. And Sheriff Nevia Nueva, I know today you released a crime stats report. What are some of the trends that we're seeing when it relates to crime here in Los Angeles County? Well... As the pandemic slowly unwinds, you're going to see patterns reestablish themselves. So we saw a drop in robberies, burglaries, sexual assaults, all related to the changes in societal patterns that made more people, you know, available to become victims of these crimes. So as they diminish and society reopens, you're going to see an increase in burglaries, in robberies, for example. You're going to see an increase in sexual assaults. And that, unfortunately, that's gonna, it's going to resume the normal, normal pattern. So we're going to try to work hard on our end to curb it. But, again, it's something the community needs to be aware of. Well, on that note, <laughs> Sheriff Alex Villanueva, uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing your perspective. We always appreciate it. Um, and this is such an important conversation that we'll continue with a lot of voices over the uh, weeks and months ahead. Thanks so much.